And I've decided to uh, keep among them uh, three poetry books. And I'm keeping those books there because uh, I want to exercise some kind of attention, um, an attitude uh, in the way I read poetry. And I've been doing this with a purpose. The purpose to unlearn the privilege of interpretation. To unlearn the loss of interpretation, so to speak. And maybe find an expanded experience in the reading of poetry. It happened that uh, one day I came across a poem by Langston Hughes, a poem uh, called Negro Dancers. Somehow, naturally, I began reading it uh, the way I've been reading these other poems. I could feel my body uh, getting into the groove of the poem. I, I could feel myself uh, releasing. But somewhere along the way, my, my voice stumbled, my body stopped. I felt some kind of awkwardness, uh, unease, strangeness. Da, 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 da. What, what was uh, happening? What, what was the reason for this strangeness, this uh, blocking of, of the process? And I was performing it as if my voice and my body could assume the position of a black body as the speaker of the poem. What I keep from this experience is the sensation of that moment of presence is the the way my body reacted the recognition the sudden the unexpected recognition of the whiteness of my body well i've watched the play probably 29 times it's the story of four black people who are now uh, undergraduate students trapped within this uh, structure, this institution, excluded, confronted by uh, systemic racism. Uh, my husband, uh, Patterson, is uh, one of the actors in the play. So that explains why I watched it uh, 29 times. I, I just felt uh, part of it. But uh, it's not only that. I think the play itself um, just caught me in a way. I was in the audience and I laughed and I was touched by it over and over and over. When you follow the development of a play that many times, one of the things that to me was very interesting was to uh, perceive the transformation and, and the changes the, the play goes through. So what happens is that they were invited to uh, tour the play in the state of Santa Catarina. There had been one big change in the play, uh, which was... Uh, uh, in the final scene. 
one of the actors would ask four black persons from the audience to come on stage. And four people would go up. Then she would ask for four more people to come on stage. And then eight people. And then all of the black people that were in the house to come on stage. Going back to the tour in Santa Catarina, there was this uh, expectation about how that scene would work because uh, racism in the south of Brazil historically has been much more present and uh, resistant than in other parts of the country. As expected, the experience was totally different from what it had been in other places, Rio, Sao Paulo, Bahia. That scene became meaningful in a very different way. The, the absence of black bodies on stage now spoke loudly. What also happened there is that in those awkward moments of discomfort and the silence, some white people went on stage when there were few or no black persons in the audience. Well, in one of the performances that I was attending in the South, I just thrust my body onto the stage at that moment. As soon as I was on stage, facing the audience, having by my side a few other people, the black actors, uh, my husband. So suddenly it struck me, an awareness of being in a position and occupying a space where I did not belong. But uh, actually what it's hard to explain is the physical uh, impact, how that moment somehow condensed in its intensity, the embodiment of the complicity, of my complicity, with uh, systemic racism. For some time I've been thinking about writing a paper on these events. But where to find a language to translate the intensity of presence from those moments? And should I? What if by writing it I end up once more projecting my voice's privilege onto the public sphere exactly when my body begs me to listen, not speak. For some time I've been hesitating about writing this paper. For some time I've been afraid of writing this paper. Besides, I'm a little tired of begging those respectable journals to recognize my presence, to recognize any presence to accept some degree of nakedness, to taste some of my flesh. To think of uh, an academic paper as a mode of representation that also operates that kind of fetishism, that kind of uh, deconstruction of the wholeness of the body and the focusing and the zooming in on parts of the body. In this case, uh, a swollen brain, a hard, erect consciousness, the muffled groaning of thinking. Yeah, pornography.